announcement for all of you as you are aware that now it's the uh, the syllabus is near about to complete for all of the subjects so we are going to start with our internal assessment uh, procedure for the practical papers and uh, you have two practical papers one is the programming in c practical and second one is programming in uh, advanced database management system so we all have uh, we have enabled the internal assessment exercise for the programming in c for uh, to complete that exercise you have to log in to your uh, lms account and then you have to go to programming in c practical subject then you have to log on to the uh, your virtual lab and uh, when you go to your virtual lab there uh, you can uh, have your internal assessment if you are still you are have not logged in to your lms then it will not visible to you so please to complete the internal assessment part please log in to the lms then only you are able to complete your internal assessment if you have any doubt regarding then you can ask me yes shekhar you can unmute yourself and ask yeah uh, can you please guide me where i can find the internal uh, this assessment in uh, lms portal you have to log in to your lms uh, portal with using your credential then yeah. you have to go to programming in c practical subject okay then after the after your 10 or 11 unit you have a one uh, specifically one tab for the virtual programming lab yes yes and when you click to your virtual programming lab then it will open up a page where the, uh, you have a link that virtual login to the virtual programming lab then yes, you yes. click that there you can see your uh, internal assessment part that exercises are allotted to you you have to complete the seven exercises for the internal assessment sure, sure. is there any date as announcement ma'am for this uh, internal uh, yeah still now the last date is the 30th september to complete this assignment okay for what about and the assessment submission also uh, same as uh, 13 only there is no extension actually we are planning to launch it for the adbms most probably in the next week because internal assessment part is only live with the practical papers so we have only two practical paper programming in c and advanced database management system so we have launched the uh, internal assessment for the programming in c and most probably by this week we are going to launch the advanced database management system lab also and it uh, it has a weightage of 70 marks if you see your uh, if you all see your curriculum then the internal assessment is of 70 marks there are seven exercises and this comprises your 70 marks for the lab and 30 marks for your external and uh, 70 for your internal yeah ma'am but i was asking is uh, uh, the last date is still the 13th only for the all the assessments 30th September is the last date for all the assessment, uh, the assignment as well as the internal assessment of programming in C. Is there any uh, no extension for this? Ah, uh, that will be decided later on that whether we need to uh, give the extension or not. But till now, it's uh, 30th September. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. everyone. Over to you, Pankaj sir. Thank you, thank you. so i request that shekhar you please be there okay so we will not unmute you uh, hello shekhar uh, yes sir i am there okay okay so i am not going to unmute you so i will help take your help for the completion of today's lecture okay sure so whenever i ask any doubt then you are supposed to answer it if you don't know answer you simply simply say i don't know the answer okay i want to complete it should we start hello okay sir one thing and if still you have any doubt you can hello. raise the tickets regarding uh, these internal assessment part and also your mentor will also guide you regarding the internal assessment part okay thank you can i start monica yes sir okay good afternoon everybody uh today we are going to cover unit number 11 as per your course curriculum that is distributed databases 
what are distributed systems basically can if i ask you a simple question is network a distributed system or not network itself is a distributed system suppose shaker is connected via wire it is using on windows platform i am working on linux platform are we not able to communicate still we are able to communicate clear so distributed system basically can also be applied in the uh, domain of databases there are basically two broad category of databases uh, what we call it as centralized database and distributed database now if you look at the centralized database means for you are having a database on a, your local machine we call it as a local database management system suppose different users across different sites they are connected via network but they are still under the control of a centralized single machine single database that is what we call it as centralized database management system centralized database means a single database is controlling the operations of all the users there is a the opposite side of it also that is what we call it as distributed databases in contrast to this a database may be fragmented and each of its fragment is stored on a different machines those machines we call them as nodes workstations or simple machines and they are connected through network centralized database is also connect various machines are also connected via network here also we are connected via network but different sites they are managed by their way maybe a same type of database controlling all the operations or there may be different there may be different operating systems also on different sites such a type of multi source and multi location database we call it as a distributed database if you look at this figure this figure has been taken from the following source you see there are various sites the database is not located on a centralized system it is distributed across the globe distributed across various sites these sites we call them as nodes or workstations each workstation is maintained managed by a database management system clear means site 1 may have a different database site 2 may have a different database but they are able to communicate with each other they are able to query with each other they are able to exchange the messages with each other such type of arrangement we call it as distributed database management system now what are the functions means suppose we are going to manage a database in a distributed nature then what are the functions we have to support what are the functionalities or you can say what are the features that such a system has to support first one is tracking of data because data is located on various sites which data is located on which site clear this type of information you have to track you have to index because you need for example when a query is processed when a query is generated from any site it is able to communicate with all the other sites it may be a possibility that whatever the from site one the query is generated but the data it requires from another site so which data is located on which site node or workstation that is the first first responsibility first functionality that a distributed database must support distributed query processing you know that what is message passing message passing is a mechanism through which two nodes communicate with each other now you generate a query from one site it needs to access the data from another site this means the query you pass it as a message to another site the local manager at that site will execute and will pass back the result on to you this is somewhat different from a centralized system here your query may be handled by different managers but in a centralized system your query is handled by a 
single database system similarly distributed uh, transaction management uh, in the uh, dist uh, concurrency control we have talked about the word transaction what is transaction transaction every transaction in an online transaction processing system oltp system clear it must support four properties what are those four properties atomicity asset properties we call them as okay every transaction is to be executed atomically a transaction may contain multiple sub steps multiple sub to sub steps but they have to be executed atomically means either all the steps needs to be performed or none of them should be performed so that is distributed tra now transaction management is also there in centralized systems transaction management is also there in distributed but the mechanism is different how you go for a transaction management for example if i say there are a transaction has 10 sub steps now in a centralized system all the 10 steps uh, all the 10 sub steps steps of a transaction they are managed by a single database system but here it's not the case out of 10 steps three may be executed on one side another three may be executed on another side the remaining four may be executed on the third side and each site is under the control of a different database and they need to collaborate with each other in order to do a transaction similarly replicated database management the question is when you are having a distributed databases many of the files are replicated on different server servers what is the benefit of it the answer is fault tolerance so suppose if one file is lost from one site it can be retrieved from another site it increases availability also and it enhances your database recovery and last one is the security security of the database means only the authorized user has to be given the access to the data that is stored on each site so these are the six functionalities that distributed databases must support now components in a distributed databases are sites nodes workstations that i have already told you then there must be a network hardware and software software related with network understand now because different sites needs to communicate with each other via message passing so you need a specialized hardware and software then there is a transaction processor remember each site this is different that is what we call it as distributed transaction processing in a centralized system the whole transaction management is handled by a single system <coughs> single database but each site has its own transaction processor transaction manager which is handling all the trans all the local transactions as well as remote transactions and the last component is the data processor that process the data and passes on to the another system via using communication hardware and software and typically there are two types of distributed databases the first one is homogeneous the second one is heterogeneous now look at the first one so homogeneous distributed databases so when the database technology is same at each location architecture wise configuration wise location wise and the data at the several locations are compatible that is what we call it as homogeneous database clear the same type of structuring the same type of formatting is used to store data on different machines that is what we call it as homogeneous database uh, shekhar have you heard about the word little indian and big indian machines anybody can tell me have you heard the word little indian and big indian
So Abhishek, I am unmuting you. You please tell me, Abhishek, tell me what is little Indian machine and big Indian machine? Sorry, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please tell. Me. Yeah. No, sir. I, I am not uh, very much know about this. Okay, okay. No problem. That doesn't matter. Okay. Now the question is: See, if I am going to store a number, either it is stored in little Indian format or big Indian format. Means, suppose I am going to store 1024. Either 10 is stored on the upper bytes. or they are stored on the lower bytes in big indian machines little indian machines it is the reverse way means higher order bytes are stored in the upper addresses and lower byte to so are stored in the lower addresses now if two machines are little indian the communication becomes easy because if you communicate 1024 from one machine <coughs> it will be 1024 understood by another machine but suppose one machine is little indian another machine is big indian then what will happen 1024 if you communicate it the other fellow has to transfer it in order to read it otherwise if it doesn't transfer then it will read it as you communicated it as 1024 but the another fellow will read it as 2410 so these type of homogeneous means all databases they follow similar structure similar formatting the following conditions should exist for homogeneous database the operating system used at each location is same or at least should be extremely compatible for example it's not suppose so you are using windows 2007 some is using windows 2010 so i don't say they are using the same operating system but i can say they are using compatible operating systems data models used at each location should be the same one is using network model then all other using network models if one is using rdbms then everyone is using rdbms the database management system used at each location should be same or at least they should be extremely compatible the data at the different locations should have common definitions and formats now if you uh, try to enforce all these restrictions clear then it is ultimately reduces it ultimately dilutes the advantages that distributed system offers so most possibly we are going to go for heterogeneous distributed systems means any site can have its own operating system any site can use its the formatting and definitions the way they like but they are able to communicate with each other so every site might manage different type of dbms which does not need to be established on a similar original data model so the system should be made of rdbms odbms ordbms products heterogeneous database contact among various dbms is needed for translations so as to give dbms transparency users should be able to make request in dbms language at the local site so data from other sites might have a variety of hardware diverse dbms products and mixture of variety of hardware and dbms products so job of finding these data and executing any essential translation are the capabilities of the heterogeneous distributed databases now the question is next topic under distributed databases so what are topics we have discussed so far we discussed what is distributed databases what is the structure topology of a distributed architecture then we discussed homogeneous and heterogeneous type of databases then we discussed components four components in a distributed database now the question is storage whether you are storing locally in site 1 site 2 or site 3 the there is a uniform view of the data 
clear that is a uniform view of the database structure database storage so distributed databases can be fragmented fragmented means for example i have a table with 1000 records i may they bifurcate it according to the site wise for example suppose i say i have a banking applications i have a bank understand punjab national bank is there it has over 2 lakh customers are there now these 2 lakh customers to store data related about these 2000 2 lakh customers is a cumbersome job so what do we do we distributed across various sites suppose punjab related customers may be stored on a punjab site rajasthan related customers may be stored in a jaipur site similarly ncr based customers information can be stored in a delhi south indian can be stored in chennai etc etc so they may be fragmented according to the records suppose one table has 1000 at 1000 uh, columns 1000 columns means 1000 attributes it has so we can store it in different so they may be horizontally bifurcated or they may be vertically bifurcated means some portion some information may be stored on one side some another information may be stored on another side so a distributed data store means either the distributed database where the user store their information on a number of nodes or a network in which user stores their information on a number of peer network nodes replication is used from the perspective of fault tolerance availability understand away now suppose you one piece of information you are storing it only on a one site if that site is down this means access to that that item is blocked it's not available now replicated is done from two perspectives it will include it will it will enhance your fault tolerance capability and it will enhance your availability also now fragmentation i have already told you that relation is divided into various fragments stored at various types it may be vertical fragmentation or it may be horizontal fragmentation now you see uh, relation r is divided into three relations r1 r2 r3 these are all sub parts of the tall relation so this is what we call it as data fragmentation data fragmentation may be horizontal fragmentation where columns are divided across sets what is oh, sorry horizontal means records are stored in various sites now vertical fragmentation means column wise fragmentation now suppose this is a customer relation i so customer relation is there so there is a customer customer id customer name customer state customer deposit balance rating dues are there now suppose these are having over 200000 records are there now you can divide them bifurcation wise this is what we call it as horizontal fragmentation now it uh, customer may have belongs to bihar customer may belong to haryana customer belong to punjab now you see the same table we have bifurcated into hans three tables or it can be more than i request that you focus on the top there we have added a, another attribute we call it as fragment name we call it as customer bihar means this fragment will contain the information of all customers belonging to bihar so location patna may be customer haryana customer punjab etc there may be a customer bihar now you see i have divided into fragment name 23 it is stored in one customer name similarly next one is fragment name fragment name if you look at it all the haryana related they are stored in different similarly punjab related customers may be stored in different locations now you see here what type of division is this this is horizontal division understand horizontal means if you look at it what is stored on each site 
the structure wise they are same it is fragment name is stored on each site customer location is stored on each site location is stored on each site clear the node the different customer balance etc customer rating they all are stored on different sites clear now they are horizontal fragmentation now you see vertical fragmentation is similar as uh, it is simple decomposition but the vertical fragmentation of a relation or a table can be acquired by dividing the table into number of sub tables having disjoint columns disjoint columns relation n can be reconstructed from the fragments by taking the natural joins now you see here this is a customer location fragment name location node and attributes now you see here customer department how many attributes it stores customer id customer name customer state now this is uh, department this is two columns are there two relations are there okay now you see what is the common key in both the relations customer id customer id now you see customer id can be used to join the relation so now you see this is the customer id 10 11 21 10 11 21 23 is fragment name column department column department is another tables customer id node customer that is separate table now the first table stores only three attributes customer id customer name customer state the second stores customer id customer deposit balance rating and dues so this is vertical fragmentation so now let's talk about data replication replication means making a copy of the relation the question is why the answer is fault tolerance increase and availability increase where a relation r is modified or replicated a copy of relation r is stored in other sites the copies may be kept at only a few selected sites or each site may keep a copy either it is full replication full replication is generally avoided because it is cost in fact it will take more means every relation is stored on all the sites whenever you update then it has to be replicated on all the sites or it may be partial replication for example relation r suppose you are having 20 sites clear so you say that any table will be replicated on any of the three sites that type of arrangement we call it as partial replication so replication comes in helpful when you want to improve accessibility of data so most severe case would be to replicate whole database at every site of distributed system which will result in creating a completely replicated distributed database that <coughs> that is a costly affair both from the storage point of view as well as the economic point of view so this improves accessibility to a great degree because the system will keep on operating even if there is only one site working but the cost of such a system will be huge so it moreover improves the execution of retrieval global queries as the effect of such a query can be obtained from any one of the local sites so therefore a retrieval query could be worked at the local site at which it is submitted but the problem with this system is this one suppose you are going to update the table on any one site then you have to replicate it on all the other sites because only then you will maintain the consistency of the database you know what is the property of a transaction acid properties a stands for atomicity c stands for consistency consistency means the same data should be there in all the sites so 
So one drawback of full replication is it could decrease the update operation radically as one single logical update should be executed on every copy of the database to keep them reliable. This especially applies if there are many copies of the database. Full replication makes the recovery techniques and concurrency control expensive. If there was no replication. Now let's talk about advantages. These are theoretical concepts, so let's complete it. <coughs> Space independence. If the various sites are linked to one another, then the user at a site might access data that is present on some other site. Means, suppose as a user you are working at a Madras site. You are curing the system irrespective of its location. Suppose your, your data that you actually require, you are giving a query from a Madras site, but the data that you actually require is in the Punjab site, but that is totally hidden from you. You will not, these type of pictures are hidden from you. So independence means where my data is located, I am not bothered about. Next one is availability of data when it is required. The data in the distributed system are so dispersed so as to match the data needs of the users. Next one is faster data access. The end users use only a subset of the whole database. Distributed control. The main advantage of achieving data sharing by the method of data distribution is that each of the site is capable of capping keeping some degree of control on the stored data. So user friendly interface, the end users are free to have interfaces of their own choice at their local sites. Now there are certain disadvantages also there. Distributed concurrency control is a complicated issue here. You see that concurrency control, if given to a single user under the control of a centralized system, it will be effective. But to implement con concurrency in a on a distributed transaction, complex algorithms needs to be designed. So complexity of management and control. So all the related management activities and control of the same becomes very complex with degree of distribution cost of software development will also increase higher possibility of bugs as the sites included in distributed system work in parallel it is more difficult to assure the accuracy of the algorithm suppose some error occurred during the execution distributed algorithm means the algorithm doesn't run on a single site rather it runs on multiple sites if something goes wrong you have to, means it is tough. I'm not saying that it's impossible, means you can locate, but locating bug in the case of a distributed system is an issue. Then processing overhead, definitely it's a problem. So expenditure needed in exchange of message, data, and additional computing, you know that you need an extra network network hardware network software all type of resources you need and it will increase your processing overhead as well as your cost now what is the difference between a single transaction and a sing distributed transaction a transaction doesn't run on a single site it runs on multiple sites each under the control of a different transaction manager all the different transaction managers at different sites, they are able to communicate with each other. They are able to collaborate with each other. So what is distributed transaction? Distributed transactions expand the advantages of transactions to those applications that should update the distributed data. So updation of data on more than two networked computer system is termed as a distributed transaction. 
so in a distributed transaction every computer system is allocated one transaction manager so when one transaction accomplishes at various computers transaction managers interact with one another through subordinate or superior relationships so these associations are valid only for one specific transaction now here something like you have to understand that when a transaction is committed committed means when you say that the transaction is completed when all the sub transactions running on all the sites completed only then you can say the transaction is completed if something now suppose i say transaction has 10 sub transactions all 10 sub transactions are running on 10 different sites on nine sites they are able to complete their work successfully but on the 10th one something goes wrong and that sub transaction is not able to complete now you have to abort the transaction now aborting the transaction here it means that you have to abort it from all the 10 other sites they should also abort so this means if you want to commit a distributed transaction then it has to be committed by all the sites simultaneously otherwise it will not be considered as complete so when executing a distributed transaction between many computers the transaction manager transmits prepares or organizes commits and organ abort messages to all of its assistant transaction managers so this is i have already told you what is commit protocol protocol means whether to keep the record of the transaction permanent or it has to be aborted so a transaction is said to be distributed across n number of processes every process can itself choose to abort or commit the transaction but the transaction must either commit or abort on all sides so there are two type of protocols we can use these are known as commit protocols we call it as two phase commit protocol which is used extensively and there is a three phases commit protocol and uh, just Hello, hello, Monica. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Sir, now you are muted. Okay. now or debate yes sir yes actually you see that your job is to commit the transaction now either i can divide it in two steps i call it as two phase commit protocol or i divide it in three steps i call it as three phase commit protocol i will give you a simple example of a two phase commit protocol suppose i say there is a transaction that is running on all the 10 machines so one step will be that it will send that if i decided to commit then i will send a request to all the 10 others okay that i wanted to commit i am ready to commit i have decided to commit please send me your answer this is 
phase number one, making a request to all the others to send their responses. When the sender receives all the responses, means if anybody will reply only when they are also ready to commit. Now, when the sender who has made the request, if it receives all the reply messages, positive reply messages, then it will transmit. So one phase is sending the request and receiving the replies. The second phase is th when all the replies are re uh, respond, uh, received correctly, then that sender will send a commit message to all. This is what we call it as two phase. Means committing is done in two phases. Now, in three phase commit protocol, understand the second phase is divided in two phases. Understand, make initiate two means the second phase, the sender will send initiate committing the transaction. And three phase commit protocol is more complex than the two phase protocol that is why it is not used in practical life in practical life we use only two phase commit protocols what is the benefit of the commit protocols commit protocol ensures to make atomicity across sites what is atomicity atomicity means no matter a transaction contains sub transactions or 20 sub transactions or 100 sub transactions either all of them commit or none of them will commit so a transaction is a atomic unit next one is the termination protocol when a site is unsuccessful the correct site should still be capable to decide on the result of pending transactions to make a decision on all pending transactions, they execute a terminating protocol. After that, recovery is needed because some sites may be able to complete some local transactions. So when a site is unsuccessful or fails, then you should start. It has to perform recovery of all the transactions that it has not yet committed suitably. So it may be a single site recovery must terminate all transactions that were active at the time of failure. Distributed system must ask around possibly an active transaction was committed in the remaining system. Independent recovery means a site does not have to communicate with other sites at restart. So if a site, next topic is recovery. If a site is unsuccessful or fails, then you should restart. It has to perform recovery of all transactions that it has not yet committed. So single site distributed system in, sorry, this we have already covered. Now the next topic is concurrency control. Distributed concurrency control. If you remember in centralized systems also, when we have talked about transaction management, there is one concept of locking is required. What is the meaning of a locking? How concurrency is implemented in databases? That is the question. Okay, how it is implemented? It is implemented via logs. Why concurrency is required? If a single item is to be shared by 10 users, then you cannot allow them simultaneously access, make the make use of read and write operations on the data item. It has to be serialized and that serialization is supported via concurrency control everyone who wanted to use the data item it has to use a lock there are various types of locks we have discussed read locks write locks exclusive locks so many type of locks are there so these how 
to grant the access of the locks to the transactions is known as locking protocol okay you are there are two type of approaches that you can go for it concurrency control is the mechanism to achieve the atomicity of the global transaction either it may be a single lock manager approach no matter okay suppose i have 10 sites only one site will be given the responsibility that if a lock is to be granted to any transaction no matter whether it is a local transaction or a global transaction or a remote transaction the locking feature is provided only to a single site that is what we call it as single lock manager approach or we can go for a distributed lock manager in this technique locking functionality is executed by lock managers in the entire site so lock managers have the responsibility to manage access to local data items now the distributed recovery so database recovery management deals with restoring the database in the occurrence of failure you know that windows have the restore points why it has the restore points so that in case something goes wrong during the working of the windows system the database can be restored to the the windows can be restored to the last known good state that is what we call is a restore point we call them as recovery points also so when one distributed database node fails its main memory content gets vanished and should somehow needs to be recovered usually the most common technique to keep on stable storage a log of all updates performed on the nodes data <clears throat> you know that what is a logging system what is a log log indicates that suppose i am the user of a database i logs on to the system typically you might if you are using a online banking every online banking user will log will be created that what type of work you have done on while logging you may check the balance you may transfer the money every type of log is created why these logs are created just in for recovery purpose clear so that if something goes wrong you can restore the data to the last known world. so when a node improves it read all the log entries from the database and it has to be, uh, it can be restored to the last known good state so while the log can grow at large at random logging is almost always going to going with taking off a periodic checkpoints we call restore point is also a checkpoint so this check pointing decreases the time needed for recovery since only the log records post dating the recovery for example suppose windows have taken a restore point or i can say the check point just 5 minutes before this means 5 minutes before all the records are there in the check point then after i restart the system i have to look upon what is done after the check pointing because check point itself records all the logging items so if only ultimate consistency is essential the reintegrated node should still be in a state that is finally uniform that is the state would develop into consistent subsequent to a decided time in a period time period in the system now the uh, next question is distributed transparency transparency in the system <clears throat> you know that uh, what is virtual memory virtual memory means the user is given the notion that the whole memory is available for its user means suppose i am working at one site i want to put a query i will put a query in, in under the impression that the whole system is 
exclusively for me. That is the meaning of transparency. Actually, the system may be used by hundreds of other users, but I am not aware of that. I will not take that into consideration that somebody else is also using the system. I will operate with the system under the impression that nobody else is using the system, but the whole system is exclusively for me. So database transparency gives the allusion to the user that only user is the whole soul in charge of the system. The whole system is there only for the user. But actually the system is fulfilling the request of not only a single user, but thousands of other users. So these features of distributed databases make sure that each of its users think that he is the only user of the system. The database is located at various sites or there may be many users accessing the data at the same time is not known to the users. There are various categories, distribution, data is distributed across the network, is not known to the user, it is hidden from the user. Transaction is executed across various sites, it is also hidden from the user. Data failure, failure means if something goes wrong, how the data will be recovered, where and how it will be presented to the user, that is also hidden from the user. And uh, heterogeneity, heterogeneity means, suppose, I am able to communicate with other system. Will I take into consideration the architecture of the other system? Will I take into consideration what type of operating system? <coughs> I will not take consideration all these facts. I will communicate with the other user, hoping that he is also using the same system that I am using. But that is an illusion. He may be using some other system but that is hidden from the user. So this is the distribution transparency, transaction transparency, failure transparency, and heterogeneity transparency. So this is the summary that what we have covered in unit number 11 the about distributed databases. So we talked about distributed architecture, homogeneous and heterogeneous databases, distributed database storage, data fragmentation, both vertical and horizontal, data replication, advantages and disadvantages of distribution, distributed databases, what is distributed transaction, commit protocols, concurrency control, and lastly, the distributed database transparency features. Thanking you, this is unit number 11. So I was told that we have to cover two units today. So I am taking five minutes break, okay? So that you will not be overloaded because the next unit is uh, related with this one. So I take the liberty that the next unit should also be covered along with this one. So I invite, please raise the hand if somebody wants to ask any question. Yes, Abhishek. Go ahead, Abhishek. You can Hello. unmute your mic. Yeah, please. Sir, what are the properties of ONTP? Is it same as the properties of the transaction? I mean, yeah, acid property. Is, yeah, that is what I am saying, acid. Atomicity, consistency, ISO, isolation, clear. Consistency so and ISO. We can ISO write uh, the acid property. Yeah, you are asking a question or an answer. 
Because that's the same question Actually, I have given you in the assignment also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so I am asking about that. Okay, please. That the assets are the core properties of any. See, centralized databases and distributed databases does not distinguish between transactions. Atomicity is valid for centralized as well as for distributed databases. Thank you. Yeah, Ravi Ranjan, go ahead. Ravi Ranjan, go ahead. Speaking, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, why we use replication, sir? What is the benefit of replication? So I have yeah. given. Two, two times I have answered it. One is fault tolerance. What is fault tolerance? Oh, okay. Yes. Suppose the thing is that uh, why we need a backup? Why I have two inverters at my home or one inverter? Something if sometimes the light goes, it should be used as the backup. Second one is availability. Fault tolerance means Suppose one data item is located on one site, it goes down. It can still be recovered from the another site. That is the meaning of replication. So replication increases fault tolerance, clear, and it increases availability of the system also. Isn't it? Sir, but uh, in the slide we see that the replication, we cannot uh, create complete replication, sir. Then um, how? Uh, yes, sir. See, the thing is uh, whether you want full. See, the thing is uh, what type of reliability you can have. Are you want 100% reliability? 100% reliability is not possible. Carnot engine, you know what is Carnot engine? No, sir. Carnot engine is a machine that gives 100% efficiency. That is only in theoretical nature. No machine gives you 100% accuracy, uh, efficiency. You understand? It means yes. some in a machine, machine they take some input, it produces some output. Clear? So output is, is measured against the efficiency. Pop means uh, how much output? Output can never be 100%. That is only the Carnot engine is the engine that gives you 100% output. 100% reliable means, suppose I say that one data item, suppose I have 10 sites. Yes, sir. Data item is replicated on three sites. This means if one site is down, okay, still the system is available because data can be retrieved from another system. Yes, it's uh, You can understand it same same way. Suppose in the same case, suppose you have a machine, you have a one battery backup. Now suppose the power is gone, power is gone, suppose. This means still the system is available. You can still use the system from a power backup, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now suppose your power backup also fails. Yes, sir. Then you can say the system is unavailable, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now to increase further fault runs, you can have two backups. Now the first thing is, what is the probability that the power will go? You can say, sir, it is a 20% probability that out of uh, one hour, 20 minutes is the time that we can assume that power will go. Okay, assume. Then you have a power backup. Now, what is the probability that your power will also fail at that time? Mm, yes, sir. Okay, this means, okay, this is a probability. Means, suppose, it will increase the enhanced means availability of the system will increase. But availability can never be 100%. Reliability can never be 100%. I say that earlier my reliability is 95%. I increase it to 98%, 99%, 99.5% 99 I increase. This means still, now suppose you are going in an aeroplane. Aeroplane has two engines, isn't it? What is the probability that the first engine will go down? If the second. first engine is, is the, then you can go to the second engine. But what is the probability that the, both the engines will go down? But what is the need of the second engine? 
need of the circuit engineer is to enhance the availability as well as fault tolerance isn't it but even if you have a three engines or four engines or five engines you cannot prove mathematically that my system is 100% available or 100% failure free you cannot make a system failure free failure free means 100 0% error rate that is not possible okay thank you yes yes herlin yes herlin go ahead unmute yourself hello yeah yeah good afternoon sir good afternoon so i had a question regarding the assignment but uh, that is you are asking a solution or a problem no sir sir i i have the solution i just want to clear it so i i know the points so i just want to confirm that monica ma'am can i answer it yes so you can give the idea the problem they are facing okay yeah arlin go ahead dear sir uh, someone has asked previously regarding the properties in online transaction processing system you yeah. had answered that it is uh, ac properties yeah right sir sir the second part of the question it was at various types of locks used for implementing concurrency yeah. control yeah so in that part you were taught on 31 july session concurrency yeah. control unit yeah said lock exclusive lock update yeah. lock so i just wanted to confirm was that the was, are that the points we have to write yeah but uh, this is uh, you are asking a solution locks are only no, sir, i just wanted to locks. confirm that so that are the points that we have um, to write or i can answer only one way concurrency control is only implemented via lock and locks are read locks write locks shared exclu okay. mutual exclusive all type of locks we have discussed yes sir you are taught on unit 8 concurrency control yeah hello monica yes. ma'am concurrency controls have been taught so it has been taught on 31st july yeah hello ma yes sir uh, monica ma'am yes Aline sir has just asked a question related with the same concurrency control it has been taught okay sir okay so thank, thank you tara pita mandal thank you harleen thank you sir yes tara pita mandal hello sir um uh, could you please explain uh, three phase commit once again three phase commit protocol exactly it uh, means uh, uh, algorithmic wise it is a three phase as you can say right now i will only give you a abstract answer okay suppose i want to commit a transaction suppose i initiate the algorithm dekho if there are 10 sites are there any site can initiate the algorithm suppose i am a site i initiate the algorithm i in the first phase i give a request that i wanted to commit i wanted to commit the transaction i make a request okay when i receive all the means other sites will respond only if they are also ready to commit okay when i receive all the replies in the sanked phase i will send you a commit request that i am committing now you please also commit but that i will send in the sanked phase i will send the commit message okay commit message means in the sanked phase i will send that i have committed in the first phase i will make a request and wait for the reply when all the 10 replies i received positively then i will send a commit message okay now the thing is something suppose i in the first phase i send a request and waited for the reply in the second phase i will directly send you a commit mistake okay now tarapita suppose you and i am communicated 
I make you a request, Tara Pita, please commit. I am committing, you please commit. Now, Taripta, you send me a request, you send me a reply that I am ready to commit. But something goes wrong after you send me a request. You are following my point. Okay. Okay. Now, I make you a request that I am committing, you please send me reply whether you are committing or not. Now, suppose you send me a request, reply message that, sir, I am also ready to commit. I am also committing. Now, after you send me that reply, something goes wrong on your part and you say that I am not ready to commit. But because you have sent me a reply already, I hope that something is nothing wrong on your side. So I will send you a commit message. I have committed, but now you say that I am not ready to commit. So in two-phase commit protocol, that is the two-phase. That is why after sending the commit message, this phase is divided into more phases. In the second phase, I will not send you a commit message. I will send you a initiate committing, initiate commit. So initiate in the second phase, I will not send you a ready commit. I will send you a message, initiate committing. Now at that time also, I will wait for the reply. Now, at that time, you may send me a no message. So when I say that first message you replied yes, but the second message you have not replied yes, then I will not commit. But the thing is three phase commit protocol is tough to implement, particularly if all the sites simultaneously initiate the transaction. So that is why it is rarely used okay sir. so now let's move on to the next topic that is exactly related with the scan topic so please hold down your doubts dears so abhishek i think you don't have any right doubt yes sir i have yeah what is that uh, sir i have a little confusion about the ad Okay. Is it a, a theoretical concept or a practical tool? Which one? Uh, it is theoretical concept. Which concept? Okay, we'll discuss at the end. Okay, let me complete it first here. So that is unit number 12, object relational and extended models. So See, if you remember last lecture, we have discussed about object oriented databases. What are object oriented databases? The databases based upon the concept of object orientation, where we have discussed the concept of encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, if you remember. All these concepts we have discussed. Today we have discussed about databases, distributed databases. Now, object relational databases. So object oriented relational databases, we simply call them as object relational databases. Implements the concept of object oriented followed by relational models. Object relational database is nothing but relational database concepts plus object oriented features are combined together. These are the examples of the databases. Basically, we call them as object relational databases, Oracle, Sybase, Ingress, Informix, IBM DB2. This is a universal database. Basically, if I ask you a simple concept that which concept has revolutionized the programming world, particularly in the last two or three decades, then my answer will be object oriented programming. This has revolutionized the way the programs are written. Earlier, we used to call them particularly C language. It is a procedure oriented languages. OK. Particularly after the advent of the Java language. There occurs a revolution in. Object to enter programming. 
Similarly, if the question I ask you, which concept revolutionized the databases, then I will say the word relational databases. And these days we are combining the best features of both, object-oriented plus relational databases, and we call them as object relational databases. So these are the features you can say object evolve to meet the challenges of new applications because come see database you know that today's database is not only storing the information in boolean form integer form character form it's not like that you need to store videos also. You need to store images also. And images, you know that image processing itself is a very huge field. A single image can take a data that is capable of holding 100 records, student records. The memory requirements are huge. So just to meet the new challenges in today's world, we designed the object relational databases has been designed. So complex, sophisticated, diverse data needs, variety of data required such as image, audio, blob stands for binary large objects. Similarly, there is a C log was there, the character large objects are there. Best features of object databases into relational model. So to meet the growing need and challenges of the producing new applications. This is also only a theoretical concept. So because practically we are not able to cover much about it. So but you should remember the features. So what is object relation? So reuse, you know that what is the best benefit of the inheritance concept of object orientation? Can anybody tell me what is the best benefit of inheritance? Reusability. Reusability is supported via inheritance feature. If you remember, inheritance supports is a relationship. So programmer can easily extend DBMS server to achieve standard functionality rather than coding it in each application. Sharing, the code can be shared then migration. ODBMS allows enterprise to easily migrate from their existing systems to the new ones. User friendly, a user may easily make use of object oriented systems in parallel of the RDBMS features. Disadvantages is cost. The ODMS approach is complex in nature and is associated with increased cost, reduced simplicity. The extension to relational model in the form of ODBMS can have diluted the simplicity of the relational model, limited use. This is required, will be used only for a limited set of applications, which may not be practical for relational technology. Architectures, the physical architecture of object oriented model is not suitable for handling high speed web applications. These are the important features. Some of the important features of object relational databases are nested relations. You know, can anybody tell me what is first normal form in relational databases we have discussed about? First normal form. Can anybody tell me? Yes, Rakshit, I am allowing your mic. Please tell me what is first normal form? Rakshit, I have allowed your mic. Please unmute yourself and Answer the question that I have asked. What is first normal form in RDBMS? First normal, first normal form. 
Okay, I'll tell you the answer. Simple normal forms is that every row and column there should be atomic value. It cannot be a composite value. No two rows are similar. Clear? That is first normal form. Okay, at every row and column position. Clear? For example, if I say ID number, ID number can have only one value. It cannot have more than it cannot have composite values, etc. That is first normal form. Okay, now we can have these features via object relational model. That is what we call it as nested relations. Complex, you know that what is nested structures in C? What is nested structures in C? Structure inside a structure is a nested structure. Same way if you say there can be a relation nested within another relation. That is nested relation. Complex types can be defined using object orientation. Curing by a complex types you can perform. Creation of complex values and objects can be done. Now extension techniques for relational database management system. Now the commercial relational database manage can be extended to incorporate the features of object oriented languages. For example, use of type constructor. Can you tell me anybody what is the role of a constructor in an object oriented language? That whenever an object is created, this constructor code is not to be executed by the user. Rather, it is the compiler or the working calls the constructor automatically whenever you create an object. Now there are certain From object orientation point of view, you can say I am adding an object. Now, whenever you are creating an object, there is something needs to be done at the back end. At the beginning of the object, there is a code that needs. So that type of features you can insert in object extension clear. So object identity using references can be created. It support for additional and extensible data types. Similarly, you can have a support for user defined routines, procedures or functions. And unstructured complex objects can also be supported. The type of constructors that are used to specify complex as the user define them, they are well known as user defined data types. Now look at it this one. A row type is declared using the following syntax. Create type. If you remember when you are defining a class in object orientation, you are defining a type. Similarly, you can define a type, row type name as row. There is a component declarations. An array type is used to define a collection. For example, if I say, Create type cust type as functions. Customer name variable character that you might have seen. Contact number integer array. Now this is an array which is not defined. These features are not supported in normal SQL languages. Now support for additional extensible data types. ODBMs provide easy support for these common extensions by means of a commercial package. That is what we call it as abstract data types. So friends, from this, today we are having one more class at 6 o'clock. So I do not want to overload you. So I just stop it here. Okay. And from here we will pick up the next thread from 6 o'clock.
थैंक यू वेरी मच मोनिका आई एम स्टॉपिंग लेक्चर हियर डियर यस सर ओके सर थैंक यू फॉर द सेशन सर ओके सो नेक्स्ट क्लास विल स्टार्ट शार्पली एट फाइव फोर्टी फाइव एम आई राइट यस सर फॉर स्टूडेंट सिक्स ओ क्लॉक फिर सर या फाइन सर थैंक यू स्टूडेंट थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इफ एनी वडी हैविंग एनी प्रॉब्लम प्लीज पोस्ट इट ऑन द डिस्कशन बोर्ड थैंक यू ऑल